Hi and welcome back to this course on memories in VLSI. This will be a short introduction on dynamic random access memory also called as DRAM. So without wasting time, let's get started with the topic. So dynamic DRAMs or dynamic RAMs uh, store their contents as charge on the capacitor rather than in a feedback loop as we compare it to a static RAM. In static RAM, we saw that uh, there will be two inverters where the feedback will keep memory. As we can see in this picture, the structure of the DRAM looks just like this with one transistor and a capacitor which is attached to its uh, drain or source, whichever you call it. Hence, the size of the cell is substantially smaller, but the cell must be periodically refreshed to avoid loss due to leakage. Definitely, this is much smaller because we had six transistors in our 60 SRAM cell. But you see that in DRAM, we have one transistor. This creates a problem because we have a capacitor, which is a very tiny capacitor. And capacitors, even you create whatever the type of condition, they will tend to lose their charge. So because of the leakage, it needs to be periodically refreshed so that it keeps uh, its uh, voltage level properly. So that's the reason why it is also called as dynamic RAM. Commercial DRAMs are built in specialized processes optimized for dense capacitor structure. But again, there are some foundries that offer eDRAM, which are embedded DRAM with dense capacitor structure, but it is not as successful as that of the com uh, commercial ones, which are, you know, specialized uh, 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 processed ones. Uh, some example of eDRAM was uh, I developed by IBM. So here you can see uh, the structure or the layout uh, of our DRAM cell where uh, the top one is actually the bit line we say is the poly and we have it connected to a source or drain a diffusion region and the other diffusion region we have the poly plug and that poly plug acts like a capacitor and this is also called as trench capacitor because we need to um, dig enough and that becomes a trench uh, in the layout so 1T dynamic RAM cell consists of a transistor and a capacitor. As I said, it's accessed by asserting the word line to connect the capacitor to bit line. So we can turn on the transistor by asserting this word line. We uh, supply high voltage to this, which is uh, one to this, and we will have uh, this transistor turned on. So this capacitor is connected to the bit line. So you can do the read operation very easily. The properties of uh, DRAM are it is extremely dense. This is the densest known RAM memory available and it is much lower than that of the SRAM because uh, of its multiple properties such as if even if you read from this memory uh, you have to write it once again because once you read from the memory uh, definitely the voltage will go uh, down and because of its refresh uh, structures and um, complicated structure it is much lower and lower cost compared to any other read write memory available that's because as you include more and more bits uh, in a smaller area you have definitely uh, a lesser cost because uh, in vlsi area is what costs more so some of the applications are um, main memories in computers or secondary memories such as uh, DRAMs or uh, SDRAMs. Uh, nowadays, most popular is uh, SDRAM, which is a synchronous uh, DRAM memory. And also it's used in graphic cards and uh, other applications. We will see its uh, read and write operation in further videos. So this is a brief introduction on uh, dynamic random access memory. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.